The Zombie Classroom, you know, it's by Joji Ito, the guy who made all these other remarkable horror stories like Tomie, Uzumaki, or my last video, uh, Black Paradox. Not just a shameless plug-in or something, but yeah, you know him from all these. And this could be the complete story of Dissolving Classroom and why kindness kills. Chapter 1, Dissolving Classroom. This chapter starts off with a new student named Yuma Azawa. Once again, the chance to introduce himself, he just abruptly starts apologizing for no reason the students think it's some gag of some sort but one girl named keiko is confused more than anything then it goes on to highlight the instances of azawa apologizing like bumping into another student's shoulder in the hallway then gossip starts circling around the school about the new transfer student to b of that he keeps apologizing for everything and he even apologized azawa started getting bullied for this in the restroom then these guys start making fun of him and push his head to the floor and demanded hey you want us to forgive you drink some toilet water after the incident he walks into the hallway that runs into keiko she gives him a paper and says yuma you need you need to stop apologizing you apologize too much and the first thing he says back to her was like oh my bad apologizes again then it cuts to keiko walking home but she is followed by some strange girl with a haunting stare on her face keiko starts running but every time she thinks she's gone away boom the girl pops up with still that haunting stare the little girl leaps towards her and says let me suck out your juicy brains keiko trying to avoid this runs into the street and gets struck by a truck she wakes up in the hospital with her parents asking why'd you even jump in the traffic to the first place and she starts describing the little girl they are wondering who she was then suddenly azawa opens the door keiko thinking oh it's just a student her classmate here to see if she's okay but he instead came to apologize and they can they're just confused and he reveals that the little girl that was chasing Keiko was his little sister. They dragged this conversation into the hallway. Azawa on his knees begging, please, please, you know, apologizing. But Keiko's parents threatening to call the police. He even pleads even more on his hands and knees. And then and they finally decide, okay, we're not gonna call the cops, but we need to talk to your parents at least. But Azawa reveals that their parents passed away and it was just him and his sister. But Azawa was still calm after that. Day after day, apologizing to his parents. Keiko would start looking forward to his visitations and that his apologies begin to make her feel relaxed and her mind and her body would just melt away. A week has passed and she finally gets released. She's walking with the Zawa. Then he's like, Ah, oh, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Chizumi, Chizumi, wasn't always like this. She changed because when we were little, my parents were so strict and they would yell at me for everything. He found a way to relieve the stress by killing small animals like bugs, frogs, and snakes. That is a divine wrath that Chizumi was just possessed by a snake that he killed long ago. But not long after that, rumors were going around about some creepy girl stalking women and children. But to prove these rumors true, Ozawa would go apologizing to the victims' houses. Then one time, Keiko witnessed him apologizing and jumped in too to apologize with them. And even asked Ozawa to go to his house because she believes that she can change Chizumi's heart. <laughs> To make her feel good again him not wanting this just decides to run away but keiko knows where she lives where they live knocking first but no response she just lets herself in and then notices a rotting smell then decides to walk through the house then boom chizumi just pops out and with the bloodshot eyes and asks why are you even here and she's like oh i'm just here to be your friend chizumi and she said well a true friend will let me slurp out all those brains keiko said your brother's been apologizing all around town what do you think it makes him feel and she's like well he feels amazing he feels like he died and gone to heaven he doesn't apologize to me he apologizes because he likes it he gives him pleasure and that he's hopeless and he killed too many snakes and frog keiko stops her and says well he just regrets all that it was just him trying to re release stress because y'all's parents were so strict and chizumi says nah it wasn't for stress it was a ritual to summon the devil and it worked because one day he came back from the hills he was shivering groaning all night he didn't apologize to anyone in front of him but he he was praying, praying for forgiveness from the devil. And then those apologies began to come with pleasure. Keiko not believing these stories. And she, Chizumi says, you don't believe me? And then she opens this closet door with the two heads of their mother and their dad. And their brains oozing out of their eyes and their mouth and nose. Keiko still not believing this, just goes home. Her mother calls her down for dinner. Then Kiriko, Keiko notices, hey, there's no food here. She's like, the mother oh my bad I, I just been losing my head lately but they start noticing their nose runny that like they have a code of some sort but Keiko, Keiko just goes back upstairs the next day rolls around and everyone has the same symptoms as to her dad and her mom runny nose as I was getting bullied again so 
Keiko decides to stand up for him. But once the bullies turn around, their eyes and their nose were oozing out the brain substance. The bully starts walking towards her, but their body just drops to the ground. Then Chizumi just walks out of nowhere, walks into the room laughing, then gets on the floor and says, ooh, yummy brains, and looks back and says, do you believe me now? Then explains how Zawa's powers work, that it's like electro and magnetic waves passing through him and the devil and that Keiko's brains will start to melt soon too. Then Ozawa starts yelling at Chizumi, her sis his sister, and then starts apologizing and that their parents has died when Chizumi was still young and that she started eating the, the brain that was oozing out of them and she couldn't get enough of that and that it was all his fault. Then Keiko says stop apologizing and starts to run away. Then she runs into the staff room and the same outcome has happened to them. Brain oozing everywhere. Ozawa was still chasing her around, apologizing, and she she trips over a body on the floor. Then a horrifying figure is, is behind Ozawa. Maybe the devil? Keiko passes out, then wakes up in the hospital. Her brain stopped melting. It was probably because she fainted and couldn't hear those apologies anymore. Then was informed that her parents has died, but she didn't really feel anything, probably to the brain damage. And to what happened to Ozawa and his little sister Chizumi, they must have went somewhere else, to another town, and probably do the same thing. Now we're on to chapter 2 of the Dissolving Classroom. This one's to be called Dissolving Beauty. This chapter starts off with a girl named Now. She came to meet her friend from middle school named Maiko. She hasn't talked to her like in two months but michael wanted now to meet her boyfriend so this strange woman came to introduce herself to now but at first glance now was like who is this who is this woman and she claims to be her friend michael but thinking to herself this this isn't michael but michael continues to introduce her boyfriend yuma azawa but michael asks yuma as she changed but he reasserts her that she still as beautiful as ever and worships her beauty then michael goes on to tell the story of how they met and it was love at first sight and every day he'll just shower her with compliments. But yeah, she gets this occasional of feeling insecure when, she, when she's looking at old photos of herself and gets a feeling that something's off. But Yuma just give her compliments, she forgets everything, reassures her. Well, Michael goes to the restroom, now asks Yuma, how long has Michael looked like that? That she used to be pretty in middle school. And then he's like, well, she's always been pretty. But then Yuma starts to spit some game to now and then she falls in love with him but in return he dumps Maiko. She started to stalk them then one encounter Yuma had gotten his hands and knees started apologizing to her. She eventually left him alone but it was rumored that she killed herself and then a montage of Yuma and Nao together him giving her compliments but with each compliment her appearance starts to change and even her parents notice and tells her hey you need to go to the hospital because you look like you're you're pretty sick and your face is getting kind of ugly <laughs> melting even but she reassures him nah yuma tells me i'm beautiful and that's you know i'm all right i'm so good but now starts to doubt her beauty and starts to think about when yuma would tell michael the same things about her being pretty but this thought gets interrupted when she's walking on the side of the street by chumi chazumi yuma's little sister by calling her a mom monster and that her brother really put her up huh and she starts to tell now that all those compliments towards her weren't towards her but to the devil instead when he sees and he praises your beauty he doesn't see anything else but the devil he summoned and he's been super busy apologizing to it and praising it plus there's like no electromagnetic waves between him and the devil and anyone caught in the middle gets their brains melted or their face wrecked and she's like you haven't noticed that your face got destroyed now is complete shock by this but Yuma comes just in time to tell Chizumi to go home and he starts apologizing to her that Chizumi grew up with no parents and she just became a liar but now feels self-conscious and asks her ask him to tell her the truth and he's like you're the most beautiful girl in the world the embodiment of beauty and she said this makes her happy then an image of yuma saying this to the devil right behind her while her ma face continues to melt however soon after yuma disappeared it was rumored that he changed schools but now we'll never forget what he told her that she is the most beautiful girl in the whole universe while people are watching her on the street terrified Chapter 3. So this chapter starts with this couple knocking on the apartment door saying they just moved in, they wanted to say hello, but something's off with them. They hand Arguera mochi and then return back to the room. She thinks the mochi tastes funny and then later having strong painful stomach ache. While on the ground contemplating whether she should call the ambulance or not, she hears argument upstairs saying you stupid useless boy, have some respect for your parents and apologizing, even saying more ruthless stuff. 
The next day, Arguera goes to her neighbors and asks if the people who moved up to 202 came to visit her. She said, yeah, they gave me some mochi, but it tasted awful. And she felt sick. The neighbor overhears this and says, oh, what happened to everyone? And asks if they heard all the noises of them sounding like they're being their kids and saying, we can't just ignore this. So they go up and ring the doorbell and guess who opens the door? Chizumi and ask, where are your parents? But she says, well, they both died when I was a baby. Then the guys upstairs ask, we know your parents are alive. Just tell us when they're going to be back. Chizumi reaffirms the answer and says, I just told you they're dead. If you want to see them that bad, you just have to die too and go to the underworld. Aguera says, at least tell me your name. And I know you have a brother too in his teens. She says to her, my name is Chizumi, Yuma is my brother. Aguera says, well, if you ever get upset or have any trouble, just come down and see us. Then she goes back to her, her apartment thinking, wow, what a weird girl. Then starts watching TV, then suddenly hears a thump on the window. She glances over and sees a, sees a head saying, hello, I am Chizumi's mother. Aguera goes outside to investigate this and she Chizumi dangling this head over the balcony. Aguera yells, what do you think you're doing? Chizumi holds the head and says, pleased to meet you, ma'am. Later on that night, she gets a ring at the door. It's Yuma and he's there to apologize because his sister was so rude and the mochi that his parents gave everyone was spoiled. But Arguera, but she said, don't worry about it and says, more importantly, your parents are treating you horribly. But Yuma says it's his fault and walks back to his apartment. The old woman next door said he visited her too and he was so polite and nice. But this is interrupted Yuma's parents yelling upstairs. What have you been telling the other people in the building? Why are you going around lying about us? Aguera and the old lady and also the man upstairs hear this and decide to confront the parents. The parents answer the door. The upstairs man says a terrible racket is coming from your room and your kids are screaming way too loud. It's not normal. The parents respond with, are you saying we abuse our kids? His response, yeah, that's exactly what it is. They respond, you have no right to assume that. Arguera says, the point of displaying them is to make them grow up to be smart and healthy. But just seeing your son is like that is concerning. Your, the mom says, basically, this is pointless and slams the door. Arguera and the old lady are, are worried about those kids. But she doesn't want to get involved anymore. Arguera tries to convince the old lady that Chizumi is growing up all weird and wrong is because of the parents. But Chizumi is watching over them during this conversation. And they invite her for cake. Aguera asks if her mom and her dad are always angry like that. Then the old woman noticed her face that the bandage is going old and it's not good to have with have that one on for too long and wants to replace it. But Chizumi said, no, nah, I'm not hurt and takes off the band-aid. And now they start to think that the brother is the only one getting abused by the parents. But Chizumi said, no, it's because he's a misogynist. Then this gets interrupted by Yuma apologizing loudly. The neighbor upstairs had enough and starts banging on their door. They swing open and a plain stare from their faces. And they ask, Erishiyama, I guess that's his name. Sorry, I butchered this one too. I apologize, everyone. How would you like to go to hell with us? And their eyes start oozing out, brain matter. Yuma reaches over to him and start apologizing to Mr. Erishiyama, the guy upstairs. But this apologizing, shrinking him out and pushes him down, but it doesn't stop him from apologizing. Then he gets jumped by his parents and the guy upstairs. Aguera and the old woman jump in to stop this. <laughs> I don't know why they just jumped him, but all right. Saying, you're a grown man. What are you doing ganging up on him? And he just runs back into his room. They take Yuma to get cleaned up. While cleaning him up, the old woman says that he can stay with her if he wanted. And if those parents try to come for them, they'll just call the police. But Yuma says, I'm just going to go home because I love my parents. And the yelling continues and they look up thinking that they should call the police. But suddenly a drop comes from the ceiling thinking must be water. Aguera says it smells and it's slimy. Chizumi's laughing saying Mr. Mush has finally melted because of my brother. Aguera and the old lady rush upstairs and see what's wrong but Chizumi says there's no, there's no point and yelling insults continue saying just die already. You're right. Just kill this brat. They rush in. Yuma's on the ground being held by his parents or these people at this point, I guess because they're dead. But anyways, the mom says move dear and they begin to melt instantly. Aguera and the old lady are shocked and Chizumi explains that her brother is possessed by the devil and if they get involved with him, bad things will happen to you. Mama and Papa died long ago, but he keeps calling them back from hell and they melt again over and over and over and they begin to melt as well. I guess it's time for him to move again.
chapter four this chapter starts with like a strange rumor going around town about a creepy girl that hangs around on the sidewalk threatening people who ever pass by then someone of the girl's family comes to visit the victim and they apologize he'll apologize over and over and over and then for some reason the victim disappears leaving nothing but a stain the kid tomohito is walking home from school and sees the girl chizumi she pounces on him and holds him down and says yep you're really cute and licks him all this going down while yuma's watching from a distance he goes up to chizumi while she's singing and says please stop making me suffer but she's like well you enjoy it yuma responds you don't understand how hard it is for me to clean up your mistakes but she continues to laugh at him he gets on his hands and knees and says please don't hurt me anymore i'm sorry she laughs she's like you're trying to kill me apologizing is how you communicate with the devil and that devil energy melts whoever you apologize to but that won't work on me that'll just make me stronger besides the brains that leak out of people her favorite part right and then yuma grabs her by the neck strangling her and saying it's your fault my life is so messed up just die the world is better off chizumi's last effort she starts scratching at his arms and he finally lets her go she's still laughing and yuma says well you're awfully in a good mood today did something happen maybe you're in love tomohito sorry for butchering this name too comes home and his mother asks that something happened to you on the way home because this young man came by go on his hands and knees and start apologizing saying i'm sorry for my sister's behavior tomihito tells her don't open the door if he comes back because if he apologizes to you, you end up disappearing and nothing will be left but a stain but she doesn't believe it of course and asks who is this girl but he just shrugs it off and tells her she's just messing with me so she plans to talk about this more when his father comes home and they'll call the police tomihito is thinking maybe she's the girl from that ghost story but the dad finally arrives he comes home and says he met the guy in the street he had his face in the ground apologizing for what his sister did they start discussing it they even feel bad for the guy so they won't get the police involved but if anything else happens it'll just call the parent the next morning tomohito didn't go to school because he didn't feel well but he wakes up to someone apologizing and his mother's asking where they lived and what his name was but he continues to apologize over and over they're in the living room setting and the dad says that yuma showed up again while he was coming home from work and the mom says yeah but isn't he good looking though they both agree and start laughing while the brains start melting out through their nose and continue out through their eyes tomihito rushes to get a doctor but sees chizumi then he runs the other way but runs into yuma and starts asking for his help saying his mom and his dad are really sick yuma says all right follow me and drags him to a house yuma says oh you can just you can make yourself at home calls for his sister chizumi tomito begins to panic but yuma says my sister's in love with you but she's been evil until now but i think she's grown as a person she's fallen for you do you think you'll love her back in return he yells no so they tie tomito up yuma begins to apologize but Chizumi stops him because obviously you know what's gonna happen he's gonna melt and she says if that happens I'll hate you forever Tomohito begins to yell but Chizumi says no, there's no use for that and she starts dancing and singing and gets on top of him and says I really like you and starts licking him Yuma says he can't stand to watch Chizumi she is evil by nature she's a devil child she is born from our mother and the devil she can never be a good person Chizumi says stop making me laugh stop telling stupid lies you're the one in bed with the devil that's why you melted so many people look she's rolling back the closet door full of bottles these are all the people my brother melted and that he's proud of his collection but yuma yells i only preserve them because that's your favorite she begins to drink aguera you know from the last chapter the lady downstairs but he tells her to stop and says don't you remember she was kind to us in the middle of drinking yuma takes the bottle from her tomohito is still trying to find a way to get out to save his mom and dad Chizumi keeps on messing with them yuma checks in on them here and there tomohito begins to he start hearing things like voices voices are coming from the bottles saying what if we can help him somehow the little boy will die if we don't help him he'll melt and just end up like us we must do something so they tip over and start spilling all over the floor and begin to completely cover tomohito and they speak again and they say hurry quickly before they notice use our grease to slip out of the ropes tomohito finally escapes but he says when he was running he felt like someone was chasing him so he ran like his life was on the line he finally got to the police but they told him his mom and his dad were already gone nothing but stains and that little house was totally empty
final chapter. A man and a girl that you recognize from the first chapter, Keiko, is now in a wheelchair. They stumble across the house and the man decides to go inside, but once opening the door, he smells something rotten. Yuma comes out and over and introduces himself to the man, and we come to find out this man's name is Himoka, and says that he's with the Daily News, and he came to ask some questions. Yuma agrees and the first question he asks if he remembers the incident a couple years ago that happened at a high school in Totsigi where a large number of students and teachers died and the way they died is said that their brains melted. The theory is that it was some kind of pathogen but it was never confirmed and he further elaborates it seems similar circumstances have been happening across the country and also thinks that the recent disappearances in the news are connected but Yuma asks why, why are you asking me this. He brings him outside and asks if he recognizes the girl. The one wheelchair. He said he doesn't, but Himika begins to explain that she's a survivor of that high school and her brain is badly damaged, but she's unable to talk. But the only words that she's able to say is Yuma. So they came looking for him. So hopefully he'll be able to explain some of the events. So he's like, oh yeah. He's like, wow, she was so nice to me. And he was like, how are you able to find me? It's strange because Keiko just knew where to look. Yuma begins walking toward Keiko saying whoa it's been a while then she starts to panic begins to apologize chizumi on the roof watching and she says why don't you just date her already even though any girl you go out with has her face fall off and her body melt my brother made a pack with the devil and everybody who gets near her melts people melting all over the country it's all because of him it's because he apologized to him yuma tells her to stop saying awful things i've served so much because of you you know the same shit every chapter he says this Im interest is humica and he asks the question can you explain how people are melting because of you keiko or orisu that's also her name was terrified of you apologizing to her and he wants to know what your apologies have to do with these events he said don't listen to my sister she's a monster yuma gets on knees and start apologizing saying i'm too i'm so sorry for her behavior this triggers orisu even more himaka pushes her away from the situation and decides to leave her at the van he goes back to talk with yuma he enters the house still notices the smell he checks in one of the rooms he notices something's poured down the drain and he thinks that's why it smells so bad it cuts to Yuma and Chizumi running. He dumped the brain juice so there won't be any evidence. Chizumi brings up what they gonna do with Mama and Papa's head. He says, we have no choice, we have to bury him in the woods. While burying him in the woods, they begin to talk, saying, Yuma, you're a terrible son. Why are you burying us in the dark, cold dirt? Saying, how do you think you're gonna live without us? He begins to cry and apologize. They go up and smoke. Himika goes back to his job to tell the chief that he made contact with the person of interest of this uh dissolving incidents keiko lead was right and it was some man named yuma but he doesn't have much proof of this but he's going to look into the other survivor the little boy who was abducted and it's possible that the abductor was the same young man yuma hopefully his testimony will give us some clues he's currently at the orphanage because his parents went missing you know nothing but a stain however at the orphanage told me it was found dead with his neck slit i don't know what i'm gonna show right here so imagine you could look it up i'll put the page number all right so Himika tells the chief this, but the chief thinks that it's Yuma, but, but Himika tells him that Yuma has an alibi because he was at the state office yesterday with his sister. So the chief's like, what's your source? Well, he asked Kira Keiko where he went, and then he called the real estate office in that area and they think she's a psychic because her hunches end up leaning them to yuma and his sister this is probably because that she is a survivor of the dissolving classroom incident and sustained some brain damage she have gained some special powers so they visit her at the hospital and they ask where yuma's at and she points on the map they're in the forest wait they're in the forest due to not being able to get a house but while sleeping yuma hears voices such as do you know how much you hurt hurt us we'll never forgive you how much did it did it hurt to be turned into slime and poured down the drain he runs out of the tent and he runs into himaka yuma's like what are you doing here he just wanted to talk because the other day the little boy was murdered at the orphanage and he could have gave an important testimony and tracked down he tracked down the other people who said that they are uh, they know you all over the country and in the last few days he lost contact with them also, he looked into this and it turned out that it all died under various circumstances. They disappeared. He's not accusing him of doing these things, but the whole country is shooken up. The disappearances and dissolving humans, he wants Yuma to explain this, and he intends to publish his scoop in the news soon. Yuma says if you don't tell him, public opinion will take form. So he says, just tell me if you're innocent or not. Yuma claims that he doesn't know anything and begins to apologize to Himoka. And he says it's not going to work. He doesn't believe in this type of stuff about people melting just by apologizing. And besides, his heir already has a story and is ready to publish even if he dies. Also, Keiko is determined to keep 
On discovering his location, Yuma runs back into a tent and picks up Chizumi and gets away. While they run, Himika yells, if you change your mind, just come back and find him. So two days passed. As promised, the article was published and it was on the front page. It caused quite a stir, but the next day they show up to the lobby. Himika tells the chief just to send him to the conference hall because he's with Keiko. At the hospital, Himika tells Keiko that he's going to have a press conference at 3 at the hotel and they'll be broadcast and live stream all over the country and saying that this is all according to plan he wants to wants to thank her for the help but in the end we're not able to understand each other were we mr mori didn't pick up on the farce with the map his face becomes uncanny and says that it took you too long and says i'll take you along too it should be fun a little public apology his appearance changes to something demonic like the devil in the first chapter that yuma made a deal with they arrive at the press conference and the chief starts to introduce himself but he's cut off. Yuma yelling saying he's very starving continued to use multiple apologies. Chizumi cheers him on, the press thinking that it's some kind of confession. Himaka, or the devil now, is saying, wow, he's excited. He's giving off so much energy in the media. The media and everyone that's there starts to melt, brain oozing out their eyes, their mouth. Keiko gets up from her chair and yells stop, then suddenly she's completely liquefied. Chizumi starts to lick the ground where she melted at. A voice starts to be heard, saying you won't get away with this. Yuma looks up and the brain sludge begins to form on the ceiling. Big globs of slime fall down and completely bury Chizumi and Yuma. Then suddenly the devil appears in front of the city and the captions read that the terrible spectacle and the tr that transpired at the press conference was spread all over the world by the media. As for what happened to the people who watched it and where Yuma and some things are now, would I leave to your imagination?